Hello everyone, and I think it's no secret that there is a so-called conflict between negative fans and creators, and this shot is a direct confirmation of my words. However, Glitch and Gooseworks have a few problems, one of which is the so-called adult content that is based on the digital circus, and the other is the content farm channels. Let's talk about the adult content first, and then we'll talk about the more global problems of the digital circus. Many fans don't think about the negative impact their work has on the digital circus project. For example, these images will hardly motivate Gooseworks and the rest of the animators to create new episodes of the circus. And even though Goose herself has asked the audience to stop it, we still see more and more of this kind of content on the internet every day. And what's most frustrating is that Glitch and Gooseworks have little to no control over it. But this is such a huge topic that I would make a whole video about this kind of content. But for now, let's talk about another problem with the digital circus. Take a look! What the f am I looking at? The consequences of our actions! But why are Gooseworks and Glitch so open about it? Actually, this conflict started a long time ago. Watch this video to the end to understand what really happened and what the future holds. And today we are going to talk not only about what was shown in the trailer, but also about many other things that somehow affect our creators. Gooseworks first gained popularity in late 2019 after her Little Runmo project, and after the release of Digital Circus's pilot episode, the whole world was talking about this very talented animator. It all started with a post by a Twitter user with the nickname Terror Mask, who wrote, so apparently this joke conversation from years ago is now being used by digital circus haters and spineless idiots from 4chan for the hate that started after the release of the TADC pilot. If you see someone bringing this up, don't take them seriously and report them. Also attached to the post was an image showing that in the distant 2021, a user wrote, back to your drilling fetish, I see, to which Gooseworks replied, you can't prove it's a fetish, followed by an image of various characters enjoying having their heads drilled. I'm pretty sure Gooseworks hadn't even brought up this conversation, which objectively makes no sense, until recently. But in response to Terror Mask's post, Gooseworks said it was funny because it was. It's not surprising that such arguments appear on sites like 4chan, but what is surprising is that nowadays such trivial things like pictures get too much attention. Maybe it was, or still is, some kind of fetish, and what's the big deal? So I think this post is one of the most senseless judgments I've seen in years, except that in recent years, the tendency to post everything about oneself on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, or other platforms has become more and more massive and open, and therefore something like this should not be taken too seriously. Like I said, it all started with a thread on 4chan, but then this movement started to gain popularity on other platforms as well. In the end, all this led to the fact that was organized a live broadcast GlitchX 2023, on which were gathered all the creators of projects, to which is directly related to the studio glitch, on this broadcast in the main trained further plans and events. But at some point, some users began to spam massively unpleasant information. Fortunately, YouTube's automatic content detection worked perfectly and was able to fix most of the problems. But instead of improving the situation, it made it worse. Users became even more enthusiastic about sharing all this garbage on social networks and other platforms. As I said after 4chan, this whole process started on other platforms. And one example is this random meme about working out. I don't understand what the perpetrators are trying to achieve. Maybe they want to show how different they are from Gooseworks. Okay, if you don't like the amazing digital circus, that's perfectly normal. But I think it's better to spend your time doing something productive than sitting around trying to insult someone who has achieved great things. All this bullying and harassment just makes me feel Spanish shame. But Gooseworks acted very wisely in this situation by not responding to this harassment in any way and just pretending that nothing was going on. After all, if she started to respond to her abusers, it would only provoke them to harass Gooseworks even more. Unfortunately, this is the reality of the modern internet. There has also been some controversy over Gooseworks' very strange Gooseworks account. But don't be fooled into thinking it's something bigger than it is. It's just a private Gooseworks account that came under scrutiny after this whole situation. To be honest, I'm very upset by the behavior of some of the viewers. And since we're about to see a new episode of The Digital Circus, I'm afraid there will be more and more of these nasty posts. And now let's get to the next part of our video. And in it, we'll talk about a phenomenon that could jeopardize the continuation of our favorite show about the strange yet amazing digital circus, content farm channels. I think you've all heard of them at least once in your life. And as the digital circus began to grow in popularity, their numbers began to grow more and more. Initially, Gooseworks didn't talk about it directly, but recently we saw that it is really concerned about this problem. It all started with one of these channels that makes as many videos as possible in order to make as much money as possible. 
Gooseworks originally said, you guys keep sending me the worst content farm slop imaginable, and you're like, what are your thoughts on this? I like genuine fan content, but it's just getting really hard to find in the endless sea of soulless trash. After that, however, there was some calm and no further statements from Gooseworks on the subject. But it went on like that until December 29th. And just before the new year, a post was published in which Gooseworks seriously touched on this topic. I don't mean to be a buzzkill, but don't you guys think drawing or obsessing over this character is just giving these content farm channels what they want? Like, I'd be fine with it if it came from a fan and not a content farm video, but it very much comes from a content farm video. That's exactly what Gooseworks wrote on her Twitter, and even so, there is some resentment around the situation. Of course, content farm channels have a negative impact on the activities of those who are really trying hard to produce quality and original content. And the most striking example of such farms is the Hornstromp network of channels that have been in the business for several years, trying to squeeze maximum profit out of every new popular show or game. It seems to me that Gooseworks is having a hard time with these channels taking advantage of her work, and there is nothing she can do about it. One user responded that people are just having fun this way, but Goose responded by saying that if it was fan work, there would be no problems or issues. The obvious implication is that these channels are not stamping content for the sake of ideas but for money, and they are hardly fans either. And just a couple of hours later, Gooseworks published a mock mini-comic which is designed to illustrate the whole situation. In the first scene, a fan says, Goose, please do something about these content farm channels. They're ruining the show. And you can see that Goose doesn't react to this and just stands there silently, but then in the second image she replies, because it originates from a content farm video. I'd prefer if people made their own design or latched onto something made by an actual fan, and shows that very image. Well, in the third image, we see a reference to a previous post where the user said that these people are just having fun. Judging by her tweets, she received some criticism from fans of the digital circus and someone suggested she just file a complaint against the content farm channels. But apparently most people don't understand how some YouTube processes work. And that's exactly what Gooseworks pointed out in her next post, saying, What do you want me to do about it? The amazing digital circus isn't on my channel, so I can't copyright strike them. And even if could, isn't there an unspoken rule about copyright striking videos you don't like? Like, I'm pretty sure that's always been frowned upon. And that's actually a very smart stance because on YouTube, a lot of people help each other. But you always have to realize where the line ends that you can't cross. I think that both Gooseworks and the Glitch channel team have often received links to all these videos from the user, and in this case, it's clear that her nervous system couldn't take it, and she decided to respond once and for all, both to those who make such content and those who send it. Also, we know that Jax is her favorite and many fans and not only started to redraw him just from the images of those channels that are content farms. And when she also expressed her displeasure on this topic, she started receiving various messages like this in response. Also, when Goose wrote that she had not been feeling well lately, she was immediately answered that during her absence there had been a huge number of copycats on TikTok and other platforms. I think the best thing to do in this situation is to just ignore such content and not publicize it to the world so that it continues to exist in its bubble. Copycats As I said earlier, the amazing digital circus has gained huge popularity, and with it the popularity of Gooseworks and Michael Kovach has also started to skyrocket and it was expected that they will have imitators who will impersonate famous personalities in order to deceive or profit. And if earlier our main characters of the story were silent, then recently they began to speak out more and more on this topic. And the first to start this case was Michael Kovach, who published a post in Twitter with a complaint to the support service, not understanding why this strange account is still not banned. This discontent was caused by the fact that this wannabe publishes not very pleasant content, and such posts some users may take seriously and think that Michael wrote them. And he also wrote, Impersonation aside, this account is consistently harassing users, making racist remarks, and even posted an image of an address previously associated with me. I've reported them multiple times, yet you've been completely useless. And after that, Gooseworks also added, Twitter's made it basically impossible to report impersonators. I spent around two hours going through all the hoops and was met with this at the end, and on top of that attached a picture that perfectly demonstrates the flawed identification system among Twitter's support team. And Goose also showed some of the accounts that are impersonating her. And against this background, she published a post in which she expressed all her discontent. I really didn't want to do this. I hate engaging with these type of things or sieving them attention, but considering hit a brick wall through support, I want you all to report Gooseworks7247 for impersonation. They're interacting with young fans, and I'm not okay with that. 
And the problem with these accounts is not their existence, but their actions. If they had just created a copycat Gooseworks account, then there would be no problem. The main reason is the intentions of these people because first they mislead everyone, and then they start manipulating the audience or promoting content they see fit. It's just a dirty business that deserves only condemnation. But thankfully, this copycat Gooseworks account has been permanently deleted and our original Goose was able to get justice. I hope Twitter starts regulating situations like this more seriously soon. And by the way, around the same time, there was an unpleasant situation with Michael Kovach. A user posted a first-person video with the caption that Kovach was dying. In response, he immediately received a message from Michael Kovach himself where he said, I would appreciate it if you would stop making posts about myself, Elsie, or other voice actors dying. None of us enjoy it. Please, don't harass the OP. I'm assuming they are young and don't understand that it's uncomfortable. To which one user said, Didn't you say you would be more careful about censoring users and such? Not trying to dig on you or anything. Just saying. And Michael Kovach apparently got tired of arguing and just said that he had already answered everything he wanted to. And after that, Michael created a separate thread where he finally voiced his position and said, Hi, if I respond to a tweet politely asking someone to stop doing I something, I do not want to see people go after them. I've already said my piece. Do not speak for me and overwhelm the original poster. Thanks. Then one user again pointed out Michael's behavior and the response was, I am so used to replies being suppressed and nobody seeing them. I didn't expect people to even notice. Trying my best to make them stop. Feel bad for the OP and don't believe they deserve it. I honestly don't even understand why Michael Kovach paid attention to this post because it would have been much better to just ignore it. Unfortunately, as I've said before, this is the rule of the internet. The more attention and emphasis on something on the part of the protagonist of the discussion, the more unpleasant things will be addressed to him. And it is best not to publicize such situations and calmly report to the support team, hoping that they will be able to fix the problem in time. Because of these events, it's time to talk about the future of the digital circus. We have only two options. Gooseworks can accept the hate and keep doing what they do, realizing that the more digital circuses there are, the more people like them there will be. Or Goose can be offended by the audience and deliberately delay the release of new episodes or cancel this amazing digital show altogether. But I'm sure she'll keep doing the digital circus no matter what, to the chagrin of all the wannabes and haters. In summary, I can say that if Glitch have already started to show signs that this is worrying them, I think that with the release of the second episode, all such channels will no longer be able to create the illusion of a digital circus show so easily. And that is the end of our amazing video. I would like to wish you success and good luck and say see you soon in new videos.